everybody, this is Franco, and this video is going to be discussing the building of your CNC control cabinet. No matter how good of a machine you have, or no matter how great your electronics are, it's really going to be a mess unless you have a nice enclosure to install all of that good stuff into. So I'm in the process of building one right now, and I thought, uh, since I'm picking out all these components, why don't I put a video together and I'll, I'll share with you some of the things that I use that have helped to make my life easier and maybe they'll help make your life easier as well. So first thing I'm going to talk about is the enclosure itself. There are a lot of choices out there. There's a lot of different ways to go. You can spend a little bit of money. You can spend a lot of money. The option I, I've come up with that I think has worked out the best for me is this uh, product called DSE High Box. It's sold by uh, a retailer called Factory Motion and they're nice. They're polycarbonate, which I, I like polycarbonate enclosures because they're easier to uh, create holes in. You know, if you get a steel enclosure, it's a lot harder to put the holes for all the, you know, the connectors and fans and everything so I like polycarbonate these enclosures come with a steel sub panel so there's an actual steel panel inside that you can mount everything to and uh, you know that's a really good thing makes life easier and the size that I usually get is this one right here this 19.69 by 15.75 by 7.87 hinged cover snap latches that works out really well for me that those dimensions that at first that might seem maybe a little bit too big you may think that you know that's larger than what you really need but what i can tell you is when you're working with this stuff you always need more room than you think and it's also nice to have some uh, air space in there so you know air can move the electronics can cool off if you have everything jammed in and consolidate it, you know, really closely, then it's harder for the electronics to stay cool. So that's the first thing. The enclosure, DSC high box, and uh, that's worked out really well for me. They have a lot of options, and they also sell a lot of other products, too, on their website. If you go to their home screen here, you can see they, they sell a lot of things. <clears throat> I've only ever have purchased enclosures from them, but I'm sure they do a good job at selling all of their other products as well. All right, once you have an enclosure, you need to be able to drill some holes in it. It's a really good idea to have a, a step drill. Very handy, uh, I use this a lot when I'm working on my enclosures. Saves a lot of time. And you could get those from Harbor Freight, or, you know, Home Depot, you know, there's nothing special about them. You just, you know, got to have one. Now, the e-stop, right? This is a big deal. You don't want to build a CNC enclosure unless you have an e-stop. You can find these things all over eBay. You can see the text that I have here. If you type something like that in, you're going to find e-stops. But what I will say is there's, well, this particular seller, they have a couple different options. E-stop button, e-stop with warning LED, B-type. I usually go with just the plain old generic e-stop button. This is a 16 millimeter uh, one, so this is a smaller one. It's like, you know, it's about a 5 8 uh, hole that you have to drill to get that mounted. But what you want to look at is the connections. So, and actually, so this particular one, <clears throat> what it has, it's dual position, dual throw, two normally open connections, two normally closed connections. No matter what kind of e-stop you get, usually what you want is a normally closed uh, connection. That way, when you uh, smash the e-stop, it'll break that connection. And... It's a good idea to get an e-stop that has two of those normally closed connections. If you're working with the Centroid Acorn, a lot of their wiring diagrams recommend that you have uh, two, two uh, circuits, if you will, going through the e-stop. 
So I would recommend finding uh, an e-stop with two normally closed connections. A lot of e-stops will have two connections on it. It'll have one normally open and one normally closed. If you don't realize that, that can be really confusing while you're trying to wire up your, uh, your control box. So try to get yourself an e-stop with two normally closed connections. As far as the connection, the connection types, you know, this is like sort of a solder on type. There's plenty of them out there with screw down terminals. So take your pick. Then you're going to need a cooling fan. When you put this thing together, you don't want to lock all your electronics in that enclosure and then not ventilate them, right? Everything's going to get hot. So pick yourself up a cooling fan. This is a 110 volt cooling fan, 80 millimeter. I've used this size before, it works out well, and uh, you can buy a hole saw at Home Depot. So basically what you can do is get a hole saw, drill, I think, let's say like a, a three inch diameter hole in your cabinet, and then, you know, line it up, draw out these four smaller holes, and you can mount your fan. 110 volt, easy to wire up, no problem course you're going to need some covers for your fan so uh, you'll need one for the fan and then you're going to need another cover for the opening where the you know the air gets sucked into the enclosure so when you buy your fan you're going to need two of these uh, metal uh, grills then you're going to have to start connecting wires together inside and you'll notice that Certain types of connections on the centroid wiring diagrams, you know, all come together. So like the common connection, for instance, you're going to have a lot of uh, things, uh, you know, coming together and connecting to common. You won't be able to put all of those wires underneath the uh, terminal that's mounted to the centroid acorn board. So it's good to get yourself some kind of terminal block. So here's a really inexpensive one. This is pretty simple. These are terminal blocks and you basically you put one of these these jumpers on one side and then everything else is all tied together. That's uh, an easy way to do it. Very simple, very cheap. And if you want something more elegant, you can get yourself like a DIN rail starter kit. And uh, this particular sell seller, uh, DIN rail terminal blocks, they have a lot of different options, lots of different colors. Very similar idea. You know, you're going to mount this little uh, DIN rail to the inside of your enclosure. Then each one of these snap onto the DIN rail. And then in the middle of it, there's this red jumper. And this thing's sort of like modular. You can kind of trim that to whatever you want. So if you only want to jumper three of them together, you just cut it. So uh, only there's only like three terminals, if you will, that push into those. It, it's a lot simpler than how I'm explaining it. And once you get it in your hands, it makes sense. But these uh, DIN rail connectors, these work really nice. I've used those, like them a lot, and they're not too expensive. And there's a lot of different options with that stuff. And as you can see, you can do different colors. Uh, you could have black, red, green, orange, however, you know, elegant you want to get. You can do it. Jumper, okay, or a breaker. You're gonna need some kind of circuit protection. And I just pulled up an example here. This is a uh, single pole, 10 amp circuit breaker, DIN rail mount. So this would literally mount right on your DIN rail and you could use this as a circuit breaker inside your uh, control box. If you're not into circuit breakers, you can go with a fuse holder and these are relatively inexpensive you can you know use this quarter inch fuses you can get different size fuses <clears throat> gives you gives you some flexibility uh, another option if you don't want to use circuit breakers lamps you're probably going to want to put at least one lamp on your control box so you can you know visually see when it's powered up I, uh, I have used these. These are 22 millimeter lamps. They mount in like a, uh, uh, let's see, 22. That's 
a little bit bigger than three quarters of an inch. Actually, I think these mount in a five eighths inch hole. I think it's a 22 millimeter uh, on the outside. I think it mounts in a five eighths hole here. Whatever it is, you use your step drill, you drill the hole, you make it work. I like to go with uh, the 110 volt lamps, but you know, depending on what you're trying to indicate, you might want to get a lamp, you know, with a um, you know a lesser voltage. But 110 volts is nice because then you can at least get one lamp that you know, indicates that your control box is powered up. Switches, probably going to need a switch to turn something off and on. These toggle switches are really simple. You drill a hole, you mount them. This is a single pull, single throw, two terminal. And what you can see, that means it's just, you know, it's, it just has two screw down terminals. It's off or on. This is really similar to like a light switch you'd use in your home uh, if you're if you've done residential uh, electrical or something like that you can also get uh, you know dual pole dual throw there's lots of different options if you get on eBay and just start looking at these you'll you'll get a sense of what you're 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 uh, dealing with here with switches depending on what you're trying to do you may want to have you know a, a different type of switch but this is the most simple type of switch right here you could use this to cut the power to your control box and turn everything off. If you need to get a little bit more, <clears throat> you know, fancy with your connections, you can use these aviation style connectors. And basically they're 16 millimeter and 12 millimeter styles. And let's see if I can pull one up here and show it to you. So this is a GX16-4. So that means it has four connections inside that switch. I've, I've used these to connect stepper motors. You can connect switches. So if you want to design your control box so you can um, disconnect things, this is a great way to do it because these screw on and they make a very secure connection. They're very safe. You're also going to need to get your Ethernet inside of your cabinet. So Centroid Acorn, you want to get your Ethernet in there. And this is a really nice uh, shielded industrial panel mount bulkhead coupler, RJ45. So this makes a nice clean job. You mount this in the panel and you can uh, get the Ethernet into your enclosure and make it look really nice. Now I just realized there's one more thing that I need to add to this. So I'm going to pause the video and come back and talk about one more item. Okay, the final item, this should have been one of the first things I talked about, are these strain relief uh, cord gland nut cable connector things. So what these are, this is a way to get your cables inside of your enclosure. And what you do is you drill a hole, you mount this thing in it, you fish the wire through it and then you uh, tighten this nut on top and what it does is it kind of kind of compresses a plastic collet it grips a hold of the cable holds it securely and uh, you have a very very simple very clean way of getting your your cables and your wires into your enclosure and these come in different sizes there there's you know quarter inch three eighths half inch and uh, they're sized by the, it's basically, they're, they're like plumbing threads. They're, they're tapered threads. So if you're familiar with, you know, pipe taps, you'll know a quarter inch pipe tap is bigger than a quarter inch. Three eighths is bigger than three eighths. That's how they're sized. I use a lot of quarter inch and three eighths when I'm uh, putting enclosures together. Maybe you need bigger sizes if you have bigger cables, but for me, quarter inch and three eighths, they're the sizes that I use most often. And uh, yeah, all right, so there it is. There's a quick uh, overview of the different components that I found are really handy when I'm building an electrical enclosure. And hopefully some of this will help you. And please always remember when you're dealing with electricity that you know, safety is 
number one, always be careful. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Get help, ask questions, contact a professional. Just, you know, don't hurt yourself. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.